Welcome. We are so glad that you have joined us today for this Christmas Day worship service. Our hope is that you can get comfortable, maybe gather around the fire, grab a cup of coffee, and worship with us on this, the most wondrous of days. It's wondrous because we celebrate God coming to us in a child. Emmanuel, God with us. Christ the King. With joyful hearts and mouths of praise, let us worship God together. you can take a moment this Christmas day just settle down for a minute and let's just go to our Heavenly Father in prayer and just give thanks for the Son that he's given us Father on this Christmas day we want to celebrate the love the mercy the grace the forgiveness that we all enjoy because you gave us your son this day that we celebrate father we want to celebrate families today, for those that are with us, for those that may be near or far away. Father, we want to celebrate the people in our lives that impacted us this year, that made a difference in our lives. Father, as we're talking about family, though, too, we want to remember families that may not have all the family members that they did last Christmas. So we ask for your grace and mercy and and your comfort for them. Father, we also want to celebrate the gifts that we are able to enjoy because of your Son. The gift of faith, the gift of hope, the gift of joy, and the gift of peace. Now that last one is kind of hard to come by these days, the gift of peace. But if we have faith that you are still the God of gods and the one in charge, that peace is possible. So Father, we, we celebrate the possibility of peace for our world. We want to celebrate our church family and the joy that exists, the excitement as our church is growing and expanding and becoming more vibrant. Father, forgive us for the times that we take this day for granted or we make it about things that it really isn't supposed to be about but we truly want to thank you and honor you today for the gift of your son on this day. In Jesus' name, amen. 
Well, on this Christmas Sunday morning, I want to read to you now a story that if you were with us last night in worship, you heard, or wherever you heard, it's a very familiar story. It comes to us from the second chapter of the Gospel of Luke. Listen now for God's word to you. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be enrolled. This was the first enrollment when Quirinius was governor of Syria, and all went to be enrolled, each to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the city of Nazareth, to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and lineage of David, to be enrolled with Mary, his betrothed, who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to be delivered, and she gave birth, to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in that region there were shepherds out in the field keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them and they were filled with fear. And the angel said to them, be not afraid, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy, which will come to all the people. For to you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord. And this will be a sign for you. You will find a babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among men with whom he is pleased. When the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they saw it, they made known the saying which had been told them concerning the child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary kept all of these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Holy God, give us the eyes to see and the ears to hear and the hearts and minds to understand your word and your world this day. For we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You've probably heard the story I just read to you before. If you were in church or participating in worship last night, I'm sure you heard this very familiar story. It's so well known to us all. In so many ways, we've, we've come across it so many years, and it comes back to us, comes back to us, full of power and poetry and full of peace and joy. And I love it, partly because this story brings me back to my childhood. It's a good, warm, fond memories I have of, of gathering together in church and sitting in a, a warm, cozy pew with my family on one of those incredibly cold, cold wintry nights in San Diego, California. But we were there to worship God and just to be together, to do familiar things, sing familiar songs. Also, it reminds me of another thing that just I can't help but remember, which is sitting at home and watching a Charlie Brown Christmas on TV and seeing Linus come up in front of the whole Peanuts gang during their Christmas festival. And with his blanket in hand, he says these words. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And the glory of the Lord shone round about them. And they were sore afraid. And I always loved that word, sore afraid. Well, they were terrified. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be for all the people. How many times have you heard that story? Or seen it portrayed in a, in a crash, or a Christmas pageant, or on a Christmas card? Maybe hundreds of times. 
And if you're like me, you never want it to change because it's so connected to all those warm, familiar feelings of Christmas. But you know, with all the sentiment that surrounds the holiday and this season, it can really be easy to lose sight of another really important aspect of Christmas. And it's this. Because just as we've come to a time where we want to revel and relax into whatever familiar feelings we have at this time of year, what we're really celebrating is the greatest moment of change in history. When God takes human form, we believe as Christians, and nothing can be the same after that. We call it the incarnation. God comes into our time and space, taking on flesh, human flesh in Jesus, to save us, to show us what God is like, and to make you and me into agents of change ourselves. St. Clement of Alexandria, one of the early leaders of the Christian church, said that the word of God became human so that you can learn from a human how a human can become like God. And that means it's not just God who changes into a human being at Christmas. We human beings are made to incarnate, change ourselves. C.S. Lewis had a memorable image for this. He writes, It may be hard for an egg to turn into a bird. It would be a jolly sight harder for it to learn to fly while remaining an egg. We, Lewis writes, we are like eggs at present. And you cannot go on indefinitely being just an ordinary, decent egg. We must be hatched or go bad, hatched so that we can fly. And in a nutshell, that's what Christmas is all about. It's about how the divine hatches in a human being, and it's about how that same divine power can hatch in you and me too. Now, change like that doesn't have to be all that dramatic, at least not at first. I mean, When God gets ready to do something big in this world, most of the time there's no angelic choir or thunderbolts or earthquakes to announce it. Usually it's much more subtle. Like a baby being born. Perhaps of a very humble family. Perhaps of very humble origins. The birth happens. And then God waits and watches and shapes and transforms. Because the great events of this world don't usually involve battles or elections or earthquakes or thunderbolts. The great things in this world involve babies. Because each child born, including you and me, each child born comes with a message from heaven that God isn't finished with us human beings yet. In his book, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, Stephen Covey has a really good illustration of how he experienced transformation in his own life in a very, very ordinary circumstance. Here's what he writes. One Sunday morning, I was on a subway in New York. People were sitting quietly, some reading newspapers, some lost in thought, some resting with their eyes closed. It was a calm, peaceful scene. Then a man and his children entered the car. The children were soon yelling back and forth, throwing things, even grabbing people's papers. It was very disturbing. And yet the father was just sitting there next to me doing nothing. It was difficult not to feel irritated. I couldn't believe he could be so insensitive as to let his children run wild and do nothing about it. 
It was easy to see that everyone else in the subway felt irritated too. So finally, with what I felt was unusual patience and restraint, I said, Sir, your children are really disturbing a lot of people. I wonder if you couldn't control them a little more. Well, Cubby writes, the man lifted his gaze as if coming to a consciousness of the situation for the first time. And he said softly to me, oh, you're right. I guess I should be doing something about it. You see, we just came from the hospital where their mother died about an hour ago. I don't know what to think. And I guess they don't really know what to think or how to handle it either. Well, in reflecting on that experience, Covey writes this. Can you imagine what I felt at that moment? Suddenly I saw things differently. And because I saw things differently, I thought differently. I felt differently. I behaved differently. My irritation vanished. I didn't have to worry about controlling my attitude or my behavior. My heart was filled with the man's pain. Feelings of sympathy and compassion flowed freely. Your wife just died? Oh, I'm so sorry. Can you tell me about it? What can I do to help? Everything changed in that instant. You see, if there's one thing constant about life, it's change. And as Covey reminds us, it can happen in a moment that seems totally ordinary, with parents and kids just behaving like parents and kids. And then something happens to shine God's light of love into the situation. The spirit who's alive in you and me helps us to respond with a compassionate heart or a transformed perspective. And God becomes incarnate in us in that moment. As we reach out with whatever hope or peace or justice or joy that we can give to any given situation. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful Christmas day. Wherever you are and whoever you're with, may you revel in what is warm and what is familiar and what is good. And may you remember, too, that the same God who was hatched into this world so long ago in a baby named Jesus aims to be hatched in you and me, too. In Jesus' name, amen.
Thank you for joining us today for this worship service. As your pastors, we, we wish you a Merry Christmas. Christmas. We are grateful for you and hope you have a wonderful day. Merry Christmas.